Spanish people, let's get right into it. So y'all can see the clothes are on the couch, which only means one thing. It is time for me to start packing for my international vacation. And I'm so excited to go. But as we're packing, I wanted to just share a little bit of information with y'all. Most of the time I find that planning at least nine to six months out is a really good timetable. You can look for flights 11 months in advance. So let's say you're thinking about going somewhere this next year. Let's just say next year or whatever. You can start looking for that flight 11 months out because that's how far in advance the airlines actually put out their flight schedule. So just a little tip if you didn't know that. So let now let's move on to the packing. I always get a lot of questions about how I decide what to pack. What am I taking? What made me choose that? And I'm like, it's just clothes, y'all. Like, I don't have any fancy skills to do any of this packing stuff. Like, y'all know one of my main things I do is first check the weather. Check the weather at the destination that I'm going to. That gives me my first step in deciding on what I'm going to take. Next, I think about the excursions that I'm going to do while there. And since I literally discussed with the concierge exactly what my plan or plans are going to be for the week, I know what I'm doing. So I literally just look at the weather and look at my plans and then I find clothes to put on for that day. I will literally write out on a piece of paper like Monday, May 15th, this is what I'm going to wear, set it to the side, move on to the next. That way I can literally see exactly what I'm taking for that particular day and make sure we're good to go and that outfit matches up with the excursion that I'm doing for that day. I will take about three extra outfits just so I have options, right? Because I don't necessarily think I'm an overpacker, just a prepared packer. Because what if I end up not really wanting to wear that or I spill something? I'm not normally a messy person, so I probably won't <laughs> mess up my clothes, but you never know. Accidents happen. So I still normally take at least three additional outfits just to be on the safe side. So that's how I pick out my clothes. There's no fancy sauce, no secret sauce to picking out the outfits. You just pick and go. The only time I would say you should take into consideration what you're wearing is if you know you're gonna go visit like some churches or some temples because a lot of those places make sure or they want you to be covered up. So obviously like this workout shirt that I'm wearing now wouldn't be a good option to wear into like a church or something like that. Let alone, they probably won't even let me in. So <laughs> I know I've been to Rome where I had on shorts and a tank top and I was not able to get into it. Some places do have items that you can put on if you, still want to go into the places but i just didn't go in there i don't even know if the rome church that i was trying to go into had that option so i don't know but i i have been to <clears throat> dubai and they've um told me that they had like items that you can put on if you definitely wanted to go into somewhere so i know things are different in different places so that's just one time that i would necessarily consider exactly what i'm wearing if i know that that's something that i'm going to do other than that, y'all can see this is like these real colorful. Like these are just dresses, y'all. Dresses, jeans, shorts, t-shirts. The weather in this particular country is supposed to be extremely warm. So we talking like 80, 87, 85, like high 80s to be over here for the entire time. I'm going to a beach. So we're going to be good. We don't need nothing crazy, nothing fancy. So while we packing, you know we got to have the cubes. This is a must. So we got to put these in there. Put the clothes in the bag, squish them up so we can have as much space as possible because y'all know I do not like paying for luggage. So <laughs> I am taking a carry-on bag. I'm going to be gone for about a week. And anything that I can't fit into my carry-on luggage, we're going to go ahead and put it in my book bag. And we're going to make it work, right? I wanted to, I showed y'all some of the stuff that I had got when I was out looking for like luggage and, um, a neck pillow yeah i was looking for a neck pillow so i didn't find a neck pillow but i did find this nice little travel comfort kit i guess you want to call it i don't think that's what it's called but i already had took the tag off and i forgot the name of it but <laughs> it's really cool 
because it comes with a blanket. The blanket is pretty similar to the blankets that they pass out on long haul flights. But just in case, if this airline don't pass it out, I already have one and we ain't got to worry about it. It also comes with a eye mask cover, earplugs, which I won't be using because I have my headphones on. And then the thing that it, everything was in actually turns into a full size pillow. So it's inflatable. Hopefully it don't take me that long to blow it up. Y'all see the little inflate thing? Hopefully it don't take me that long to blow it up. But if it does, or if it's not that awesome, we'll take the nice backup pillow. So this thing I don't necessarily like because it's kind of big and it fits awkwardly around my neck. But we're going to take it as a backup. Hopefully my new pillow works, right? So we got that. Of course, we have our toiletry bag that we're going to pack up. And this is just to keep essentially like my clothes safe. So I'll put like my toothpaste and mouthwash and contact solution, all that stuff in there. And so any type of liquid stuff goes in that bag. And just in case if something was to spill, I don't have to worry about it falling onto my clothes. So don't nobody want to wear clothes by the time you make it to your destination. <laughs> so we got that. I also got like just some, um, I leave just in case because you never know. And I don't want to have to be like in another country trying to find like medication. So we're going to take that to be on the safe side. Also got some compression socks because this is going to be the longest flight I have taken. Um, man, look. <laughs> We're going to have some music. I'm going to download some uh, movies and TV shows on my iPad just in case if I don't want to watch what's on the entertainment system on a plane. But I feel like I should be okay with that. You never know. We're just going to be prepared because I don't like to be unprepared. I'm a planner, so being prepared is best for me. And I know I showed you all that carry-on bag that I ended up buying from TJ Maxx. Unfortunately... I went back to Target, y'all. Went back to Target, got the other bag because I just thought it was a better investment. It had more things for me that I personally wanted. It felt more sturdy. So I just wanted one to go buy that one. Granted, I did get it on sale though. So instead of it being like $165, 170 it only was like $125, 130 so I felt good that I got it on sale and it was a better buy. I think it was a better buy personally. Like I said, it just feels more sturdy and like it's going to last longer. So like I told you on the last video, luggage is an investment and I'd rather not buy cheaply and then have to buy again. Like that's crazy. So we're not about to do that. But that's all I bought for real. Everything else y'all already had. I'm just excited to go. And I see y'all when it's time for me to take off. Hey, gorgeous people, let's get right into it. So I am at the airport. It is vacation day and I am currently waiting to board my first flight. I have four flights to catch today, y'all. And like I told y'all, it is going to be a long ass day. <laughs> but I'm so excited for this vacation. It's about 6.35 on Monday, May 15th. And so we are headed to JFK. So Cleveland to JFK and I'll catch y'all when I land in New York. So I have landed in New York. It's about 9.05 a.m. And they have these really cute selfie stations. So of course I had to take a picture. Next stop was to store my luggage. And this place is really cool because you can pay to have your luggage stored. Let's say if you have a long layover and you're going to go explore the city, you can just pay. And they do base the cost on the size of the bag. I'll put up my price because I had a carry-on size bag just so you all are kind of aware of the pricing. And I chose to do this because I was going to explore the city and when you are flying internationally, you can't check your bags in four hours prior to your flight. And since I don't leave until 8 p.m. that evening, I have plenty of time to spare. So check my bag in. Now I'm headed to the air train so I can go explore the city. Um, I will say that the commute from JFK Airport to get into the city was a lot longer than I remember. So 
You had to take an air train from JFK to the subway. The air train costs eight twenty-five or eight seventy-five. I can't remember. I'll put it up on the screen though. And then after you took the sub or the air train, then you had to take the subway into the city. And the subway was only like two twenty-five, two seventy-five. I think it was two seventy-five. <laughs> Y'all, sorry, it's been such a long ass day. As y'all seen, I started at like 6.30. It is now about 7 p.m. And now I'm back in JFK Airport, as you can see. So, um, we took the air train, we took the subway, got into the city. I would say it probably took us about an hour and a half, maybe an hour 15 at the least and majority of that time was spent on the subway actually um which wasn't a bad ride over like it wasn't anything crazy happening in a subway on our way over to the financial district like real chill nothing too exciting for the most part our train or the train car that we were sitting in was actually empty so that was cool of course subway smells like this <laughs> that's a given so that is always how the subway smells here in New York <laughs> but, um, so that was cool we ended up walking around like the World Trade Center area which was my first time seeing that as well very nice area highly would recommend like going over there just to check it out they do have a museum as well I didn't get to go in there just because I was short on time when it came to me meeting Andrew for lunch but um I think you all should check it out. Like I said, I really like the area. It was really clean. Obviously, it should be clean. It is a memorial, right? So they had um, a few nice pieces of artwork. The subway station that's within the World Trace in the area is really nice. And they actually have stores inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all that. But it was really really beautiful inside of there. I actually went over to the financial district which is a place that I had never been before to be honest with you all and I went over there because my friend Andrew works in the area so I was able to go over there have lunch with him try some new food well it wasn't necessarily new it was just a chicken quesadilla <laughs> but I was able to try a new restaurant and see some of the new see some of the stuff over there like wall street and like the famous bull that's outside of wall street or the stock exchange so that was neat to see and i was happy to see andrew because i haven't seen him in like four years so it was really fun besides that that was all i actually did in the city um just to kind of kill some time because i had an extremely long layover which is something that i planned for because i wanted to see my friend andrew and then i just wanted to explore the city a little bit and I always prefer taking first flight of the days versus middays because you can run into the issue of having delays and then missing connections. And I ain't had time for that. So I'd rather just get here, spend my time wisely and explore the area and just have fun with it. So that's what I did. After we had lunch with Andrew, we walked around a little bit more and then headed back to JFK Airport. We got back right in time, right on time, actually, to be able to check into my second leg of the flight, which is boarding at 8.15. So, this is two of four, y'all. And now I'm sitting here waiting on that flight to depart, and I'm actually going from JFK to Frankfurt, Germany. So, I will check in with y'all when I get to Frankfurt. Oh, one other thing. So I did some exchanging of currency here in JFK Airport and I was not pleased or I wasn't necessarily, I guess, aware. So I used Google to do my currency exchange rate. And when I say it was drastically different than what they offer me here in the airport, I was like, but why? And so they gave me some random excuse well it's probably the truth but i have to do a little bit of research about that but you can exchange money at banks so the next time i leave the country i'm probably going to try that route instead of doing it in the airport just because i didn't like the exchange rate in 
the excuse that I was given or the reason that I was given, I should say. So I'm gonna just check some other sources and do a little bit more of a deep dive on that to make sure that I'm getting the best exchange rate possible. And granted, I have exchanged money before because I've left the country a couple of times over, but I never, I guess, paid attention because I didn't do large amounts of money. So this particular transaction, I did a decent amount of money just so I can pay for the excursions that I'm gonna take when I get to my final destination. So I wanted to make sure I had all of that covered in that particular currency. So that's why I did it, but I got back kinda less than what I was expecting. So I would say do some research about currency exchange and how to get the best rate. If I find any information, I'll definitely obviously share that with you all. But yeah, so next time I'll try something else to doing it inside of the airport. But that's all I wanted to share. So I'll check in with y'all when I get to Frankfurt.